Hello and welcome back to another video and today we will be discussing the failure of Nokia. In the early days whenever we heard the term mobile phone, we immediately knew it was Nokia in the light. Nokia dominated the market for an entire decade, releasing new and updated models every now and then. Nokia would cater to all the segments of the society by providing a phone with different price range and different new models. The millennials would understand the advent of this company on a better scale and it gets really tough to imagine that the once market leader of the mobile phone industry has now become less relevant in the market. But why did Nokia fail? We shall look into this by understanding the factors that were responsible for this drastic change in the mobile phone industry. It is not entirely on what Nokia did wrong out here. It is also a mixture of what its competitors like Samsung or Apple did right. Hence, the failure of Nokia is a result of mistakes made by Nokia as well as the successful strategies used by other brands in the industry. Welcome to Schematic World, a place where you tend to grow yourself. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel and clicking on the bell icon so that you never miss an update. And don't forget to read my blogs, the link will be down in the description below. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Success of Nokia Let's take a quick look at the success on what made Nokia the most recognized name in the mobile phone market before everything crashed down. In October 1998, Nokia was recognized as one of the most successful mobile phone manufacturers. By 2007, Nokia had captured almost 50% of the total market share from the mobile phone market. The reason why Nokia has accepted and loved by everyone was because of its young and energetic leadership in the market. Moreover, new technology, urge to digitalize and innovations were also a few of the reasons why Nokia saw the sons of success during their rule and before the other players started showing their skin. But as time went on, the excessive growth, lack of innovation and loss of agility in the market hit Nokia and deemed it to fail on a strategic level altogether. Failure of Nokia From 50% to 5% In 2013, Nokia saw this drastic of a decline in its market share. It was no surprise that the management shareholders and even the loyal loving customers of Nokia had feared the company's bankruptcy. Where the bankruptcy was almost more than certain, it was the intervention of Microsoft's new smartphone operating system that gave Nokia grounds to keep their hope up. The savior by Microsoft gave Nokia a little bit hope on the survival in the market. Apart from smartphone manufacturing, Nokia ventured into different directions by diversifying their business. Nokia started supplying network infrastructure as well. However, we shall dive deeper into why did Nokia fail in the first place or what went wrong. Number 1. Did not adapt to change Looking at the technological advancement in the mobile phone industry, where traditional phones became smartphones, Nokia failed to adopt this change accordingly. Nokia kept on manufacturing old school traditional phones, whereas the entire competition had already had a taste of the smartphone market by 2010. Smartphones were substantially more user friendly than traditional phones, and hence the entirety of the society shifted to them, leaving Nokia in awe of no sales slowly creeping in. Number 2 Reliance on being the first mover. While Nokia may have been the first to have a smart operating system called Symbian OS in 2002, Apple had created a market leap by 2007 with the introduction of the iPhone and the iOS operating system. 
The speed at which the iPhone worked was unmatched technological advancement for 2007 and Nokia was covered in dust with that innovation. Number 3. High Competition Slowly, since the launch of the original iPhone, the mobile phone industry became saturated with manufacturers like Samsung and Google entering the smartphone market as well. Within this fierce competition, Nokia did not improve on its innovation and was slowly lost amidst the top dogs. Not only the competition, but the sheer number of manufacturers who also served the low-budget segment was also filled in. Typically, when Nokia would fit for its consumers, companies like HTC, Huawei, and ZTE were some of these companies. However, Nokia did not look into the emergence of this sector with a serious eye and hence lost that as well. Number 4. Perception in the Consumers Nokia had been recognized as the brand name in the mobile phone industry time and again as we also discussed in the beginning. Nokia is still recognized but however the perception of consumers towards the brand has significantly changed. Today, Nokia is recognized as a brand that was once very appealing to consumers of a particular age at a particular time. There were certain things that were stapled to Nokia being popular such as the snake game. However, changing times meant that even if the snake game was legendary, it did not pertain to a consumer only using Nokia. Sooner or later, the consumer would get bored of the game and would adapt to the changing situations in the market. Number 5. Lack of Repositioning Repositioning is a marketing term used by brands wherein the existing image of the brand is changed to a new image on the basis of changing scenarios of the market. It was highly essential for Nokia to reposition their brand with the advent of smartphones. However, Nokia did not focus on the smartphone market as much and slowly more and more consumers would start fighting Symbian OS altogether. The lack of strategies to reposition itself almost hit Nokia in the belly and is also one of the reasons why Nokia couldn't make it in the market henceforth. Number 6. Lack of Strategic Plan Competitors like Apple and Samsung had gotten the taste of success to an excellent game plan which Nokia failed to get. Those companies would then start realizing more and more products every year with the advanced and updated features, thus pushing Nokia further back in the competition. At that point of time, consumers of the competitors started enjoying the new features and would start taking the same even more before the launch of the product. This anticipation of the new product launch would even create more interest among the consumers onto using the product. This wasn't really what Nokia ever felt or saw for its product launches. Number 7. Excessive Growth Like they say, anything excessive is always poison. The same applies to Nokia wherein between 1996 to 2000, Nokia saw an excessive growth rate of their brand. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing. However, the company was having a hard time keeping their supply chain intact. With that massive of a growth rate, most of the resources in the company was devoted to keeping the supply chain working rather than focusing on innovation and future growth of the company. Number 8. Lack of innovation. Addressing the elephant in the room, now the management of the company was confused as to what they should choose between innovation and growth financing. And of course, they went for the latter. This was most of the reason why the R&D of the company had no resources to work with. The features used in almost all of the mobile phone iterations were almost the same keeping the designs and alterating time and again. This led to Nokia not realizing that what strategy its competitors were posing. Number 9. Changing the Organizational Structure Nokia had been working 
with the mechanistic organizational structure when they decided to suddenly shift to the matrix structure. This change was done to improve agility. However, this decision was not appreciated by the stakeholders of the company back then and slowly the top level management of the company started leaving the company one by one. Without the minds of the top level people, touching success or even predicting it was becoming a challenge for Nokia. Number 10. Overestimation of Brand Strength Finally, another huge reason for the collapse of Nokia would be being overconfident, which is highly detrimental. Nokia had a perception that people would keep buying their products just because of the brand name irrespective of their market performance. But the anticipation was different when the competitors started showing their true skins. To summarize, Nokia had been a tremendous name no matter what. However, maintaining a proper organizational structure, analyzing the market environment, knowing your competition and constant innovations were a few points that Nokia lacked or failed to adopt. Being a brand is good, but being a constant and a monotonous brand is not. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do drop a like if you did. I will be back with more such videos in the future. So do comment down below on which company or which person should I make a video on next. With that, it's time for me to leave and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.